there's uh, one section in uh, section 2.2 of the chapter that I really wanted to review again, and it's determine the right and left-handed behavior of the functions. <clears throat> now, I have four functions here, and we're going to talk about that. And there's um, a page in the textbook here, and if you look at it, you can see where it talks about the leading coefficient test. And I'm going to show you how to how to use the leading coefficient test. So, let's just write that down again. Leading coefficient test. All right? And basically what that's going to help you figure out is when you graph a function, okay, um, it's going to help us decide the very end of the function, maybe it's going to go up. Maybe the other end of it is going to go down. It's not going to do anything about what happens in between. All right? All of that stuff you know how to figure out by finding the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and asymptotes on a curve. But the right and left-handedness just tells you when the graph is finally going to the end on the right, um, is it going to go up? or is it going to go down? And then on the other end, on the left hand side, is it going to go down or is it going to go up? And there's all kinds of cases that could happen. I could have both of them going up, I could have both of them going down, I could have this one up and this one down, I could have this one down and this one up. So there's lots of variations that you have to think about when you're doing a graph of a function. And um, Additionally, I mean, you guys are quite good with your calculators, but remember, change your window to take a look at the graph under uh, different circumstances because sometimes you miss some of the intercepts or some of the little curves that the function makes. So you really need to, when you're doing a graph for me, you need to look at it on your graphing calculator. I like you to plot some points for real without using the graphing calculator and uh, find the intercepts, find the asymptotes, and sh you should always plot some points between all the intercepts and between all the asymptotes, both sides. But then, what happens on the ends of the graph? So, the leading coefficient test has a rule, and there's, there's two basic rules. One, when the exponent is odd, and rule two, when the exponent is even. Now, what exponent am I talking about? The highest degree exponent, okay? Because these problems have more than one exponent. So, highest degree exponent. So, remember that I want high degree here. All right? So, so you look at the highest degree exponent, and then you determine whether it's odd or even. And once you determine whether it's <coughs> odd or even, then you have to look at the coefficient. And is the coefficient um, positive or negative? So two things you have to look at, all right? Now, when the exponent is odd, all right, and you're looking for the highest exponent, then you decide is the coefficient in front of it positive or negative. And based on that, we'll know what happens to the outer extremities of the function. All right? So if the exponent is odd and the coefficient is positive, so this will be the positive and this will be the negative for the odd, okay? So, if the exponent's odd and the coefficient is positive, the curve is going to go down to the left. I don't know what's going to happen in between, but then it's going to go up to the right, all right? If the leading coefficient is negative, it's going to go up on this side, and lots of stuff in between, and then down on the negative. So notice I have dotted lines in between because I really don't know what's going on there and I don't even care when I'm talking about the leading coefficient test and the right and left handedness. So um, now when the exponent is even, 
you also have to look at positive and negative. All right? So when the exponent is even and it's positive, it goes up on this end and then all kinds of crazy stuff in between and up on this end. When the leading coefficient, when the exponent is even and the leading coefficient is negative, guess what's going to happen? I bet you can guess. They're both going to go down, right? What happens in between? I don't know. You figure that out with your intercepts and your asymptotes. But now you know what the end of the curve looks like. So I expect when you do a graph on a test, you're going to have arrows and make sure your curve is showing me whether it's going up or down on the on the outside edges. And you can figure that out by using this test. All right, so let's look at these and see if we can figure out, um, figure out some answers. All right? You ready? Here we go. Um, this first one, all right, exponents even. So I'm on rule two, and it's positive. So my curve is going to go up in both directions. All right? Let's look at this one. Leading coefficient is odd and negative. Odd and negative. So what's it going to look like? It's going to go up on this side and down on this side. I don't know about in between yet. All right, here we go here. Leading coefficient is odd. What rule? First rule. Positive. So odd and positive means I go down on the first section, right? And up on the second section. Right? All right. Leading coefficient is even and negative. Down on both sides. Right? And craziness in between, you can figure that out too. So, that's how to use the leading coefficient test. Um, the note page I gave you the other day, why don't you put some notes on how to use that. Use these two, these two notes here. Um, I don't want you to have all these examples, but you could have these two notes here on that, and we can talk about it in class if you have trouble, but try a couple problems before class tomorrow. Good luck.